Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a different series this time. We're going to talk about facial rigging using Python again. So we're going to expand on the auto rigger that we've made. And now we're going to focus on the face. Uh, facial rigging is super difficult. It's still the holy grail in CG. Uh, we still haven't nailed it. I mean, if you look at Thanos, for example, from the Adventures, it's close. But you can still see it's not quite there yet, so it's difficult, but let's hope that together we can do this. So before we can start doing any ragging, we need to talk about the face itself and especially the facial muscles that we have and how they work, right? So let's first make a beautiful sketch of the muscles that we have in the face, the big ones at least. So the major one that we all know about is one, one around the eye, right? That's, I think that was called the obicularis oculi. <laughs> I'm sorry about my French. Yeah. Um, th this one makes your uh, eyes close and open, right? That makes perfect sense. Next to it, there's a big one, and uh, this one over here that will make you frown. This I think that was called the pro procurus procurus. I don't know what's called something like that. Procurus. Um, this one, this one will make you frown, right? Um, it will pull down your eyebrows to make you look angry, for example. Um, then over here, right, this is the main area that we have all the muscles in, so this area. This is the most complicated area of them all. But there's a muscle here that will start around roughly here-ish, and that will go up into your eyelid. Then you have one over here that will go all the way around here as well. Then there beneath these two, let's grab a different color. There are like four of them that they all go like something like this, right, in this area over here. Which makes it so difficult to actually get it right. So let's go back around the mouth. There's a huge one as well that will actually start here ish and then flow over to here and back around to your chin area. And then beneath here, there's also still muscle here and one on the chin. Now, the ones that we're going to focus on are these muscles, right? And these are, these are, the, are the big ones um, and the one that's actually beneath here as well. So I'm going to add a different color again. This one here as well, the very big one. I hope it's still like this. This one over here. If you have difficult, it's a little bit more easier to spot. Let's make a pink, beautiful. This one over here. So, what 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 we want to do here is we want to make joints or controls that will uh, control these muscles or mimic these muscles, right? So let's grab a new color again. Let's make it white. Okay. So I want to add controllers that will control the one over here. So I'm going to add a control over here, for example. One here, here, and here. So we got this part covered, right? So this one here, for example, can pull up here to create, to make your nose go up a little bit, and this one will create the smiling uh, facial expression. Then we want to have a whole bunch of around the mouth itself, like five of them per lip, or maybe let's do four. Five maybe a little too much. Let's do one here, here, and here. Same for the bottom lip also want to have four. Now the reason why I don't combine these two is that I want to have maximum control over the actual expressions that we can do, for example. So you can have the mouth go, for example, like down in this sort of, sort of manner, so you expose the teeth, make someone look angry. Then around the eyelids as well, you want to have a whole bunch of them. So again, let's do five here. Five, and that's five here as well. The reason why we add five is so we have maximum control over the actual shape of the eyelids, so we can make it um, curl properly when you close the eyes. Then we we'll want to add a big one over here for the eyebrows itself. And if you want to go a little bit further, you can add one here as well for the skin sliding over the skull. And then I add one, one, add one over here as well, a big one. Um, reason why? So we can have the skin slide over the um, cheekbones, right? Now that's the easy part, right? The difficult part is that. I want to have two options. I want to have an option where everything is automated and I want to have options where everything can be done manually. So what I mean by that is that, for example, if we move the mouth up here, right, in this, in this angle, this joint should also move in this direction, this one should move in this direction as well. And because this one moves, then this one should also move again, so this one should also move up. And maybe if you're smiling really hard, then this one should also move a little bit up, right? <laughs> So you can see how difficult it can get real fast. So a different move, this should also move up a little bit. This one should also move a little bit up as well. So you get like 
moving one controller means that you should move eight of them or six of them right that's what makes it so difficult and let's hope we can do this uh, same with this one for example right if you move this one up this one should also move a little bit up and this one should also move a little bit up in the same direction etc etc that makes it so difficult so let's see if we can do this so let's go back to Maya where everything is happening get this character um, for those who are wondering I've added more uh, controls here for volume control so I don't have to weight paint that much anymore um, so the shoulder area now looks pretty good when I move it by default so let's, let's focus on the face so what I want to do first is I want to create a curve I want to create a curve here like this for the lower eyelids and a curve for the upper eyelids now for each vertex um, each curve vertex like for example here here here, here. I want to make okay, a locator. Um, so it's a little bit easier to visualize the actual location of the locators instead of just having like those annoying looking um, these thingies over here, those stars. So let's make some curves, right? It's not it's not something we've done before. We've done it before. So I started my face joints class. Nothing really big here. Um, and I just added a in it here. Um, the reason why I turned this into class because it looks a little bit more structured, and I, I like structure, so that's why I did a def def in it uh, here as well. So in here, I want to make a new um, function that will make a window. I'm going to create a function called def face def create face window like this. Now I want to call it from my init uh, function, so when I click the button in my other class, then it will open up the, uh, this function by default. So I want to create here a function that says create face window. Like this, right? But as you still know from the other videos, from the auto regular, this is not going to work. Because we need to call you self first. So in my in this function, I need to call this by self dot create face window. Then I need to pass on my self. <laughs> and then I need to catch it in my create face window as well. Like this, right? And then we can pass this. I'm gonna add pass here so you can see that it works or doesn't work. So in this case, let's grab it over here. Let's create my. I added cool image over here, by the way. So cool. And immediately I get an error saying that it takes exactly one argument, two are given, right? Um, so what I can do here, there are two given, but I only accept one. Again, like the one that I mentioned before, we need to add a void here as well, right? So it passes on two arguments. So we need to catch both of them, in this case itself and its void. So it's again. And now nothing happens, right? Because we say pass here, which is what we want to do. So let's make a window. Face window, same as before. I'm just going to call this facial rig because that looks fancy as fuck. And then again, let's add the row column layout. I want to go for a number of columns, it's two, two columns in this case. Let's add a button here that will create the locators. Uh, create face locators. I should learn how to spell in English. Thank you. Uh, with 200, and then again, the C, I want to create a function that's called locators. Now again, since this is a local function, I need to add self here, right? This is a local function, which means that we pass on two again. So the self and void we pass on two arguments, and then in here, I want to make a, I want to make the actual locators, right? But I want to be organized. So what I want to do is I want to create a separate function for all the different pieces. So in this case, I want to create a function for the eyelids. I want to create a function for the mouth, for example. I want to create a function for the eyebrows as well brows and one for the smiling muscle I suppose I don't know what's called just a little bit more organized so you don't have one giant function you just have multiple different functions so I want to make a function here that will create the eye locator right okay since we're calling this from our local function we again say self dot eye locators then we pass on self again, and then in here we need to catch the self and the void. We need to catch both. Cool, right? So I want to show you a simple trick. Um, what I want to do first is that I want to start from my actual eyeball, right? I want to create a locator in the center of my eyeball over here. 
this is my eyeball. The reason why is because this is the, the pivot point of the eye, so I want to make sure that I can aim my eye properly in all the directions that I can look in, so I can actually look up and I can look down, etc. Right? But I've frozen my transformations of the eyeball, right? So the position is, is no longer available. So what we have to do is we need to get the local position of our actual objects. So in here you can find in the local space there are values here, right? So this is the x, this is the y, and this is the z. So I need to get these values to make my new space locator app. So I'm gonna show you how that's done. So but first, um, since we have both, since we have two sides of the eye again, right? I want again show you also a simple trick. So I want to make a empty array, I want to make an array within there, I want to have the left side and I want to add the right side, like this. So this is a new array that we just made and then in there we put two values left and right in this case. Then we can do a for loop for side and sides. That will do it twice, right? For it will just look at the length of our sides array, which in this case is two, and then it will execute this function twice. That's what I want to have, exactly what I want to have. So let's first start with the Eyeball center, so I'm gonna make a uh, eye center locator. I'm gonna call it space locator again, and then I'm gonna give it a name. This shall be the lock, uh, and then the side. So it's gonna call on the left or the right from line 27. So it's gonna input this one, the two values over there, and then eye center, like this, right? Cool. Let's scale it first because it's going to be huge. And let's do 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. Because we don't really care if it's visible or not. I just want it to be there. Okay, so how do you get the local position of a mesh that has frozen its transformations? Well, it's the same thing as done before, but there's a small difference. So this case, again, based on XForm, but this is nothing new, right? Then we find again the object that we want to have. In this case it's my left eyeball, I know that. But then I want to get my rotate pivot. So I want to get the attribute uh, rotate pivot. And then again, query is true, translation is true, and world space is true. Like this. So we just convert the local space into world space. That, that's all we're doing, right? And then we move the object again, in this case iPos 0, iPos 1, and iPos 2. What do we want to move? We want to move the eye center lock. Okay. In this case, it's going to make two of them. Um, on, and they're going to be both at the location of my left eyeball. I just want to see if it actually works or not. Oh, I don't because I got an error already because I probably forgot. Yeah. There we go. My bad. Okay. Let's take a look. Make it. Okay, I should probably close this as well. Yeah, we should see there's a locator here somewhere. Did it though? I didn't even call the function. That's helpful. Did it? Did it? It did not. Oh, I should probably show the window first. <laughs> Oops. Show window would be helpful, right? To actually share the window we showed. Okay, let's have a quick look again window we do okay create locators and there's a locator right there right now it's tiny probably but yeah you can see it's here right this one it's exactly in the middle of our eyeball but they're both on the same location so I've got one over here and there should be another one over there which is kind of defeats the whole purpose of this so what I did though is I named my eyes properly in this case it's left eye and right eye I can do the same thing here, right? So instead of the L here, I can just add side plus, right? So because of these two. So now when I check it, theory, we're going to have two eye locators, one over here and one over here. Beautiful. Okay. But, right? <laughs> There's always a but. This only works if the user has named the eyes L I and right eye. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So we need to enforce this. So we need to make sure that hey, if it exists, move on. If it doesn't exist, then we should pop up a message saying like, hey man, you should probably change the name of your eyeballs to eyes, for example. 
So I can just check here if the object exists. So base object exists. In this case, it's going to be left eye. We only only need to check one of them, right? Because we assume that the that the user isn't an idiot. So then we just indentation indent here everything one more time. Let's add a quick else here. If it's not, then I want to confirm dialogue again. So the pop-up message saying that hey man, you should probably name your stuff properly. Uh, I miss it. It sounds very dramatic, but yeah. Uh, the eyes. So call this. Actually, say the name as well. So left eye and right eye could not be found. And let's add a button here that says OK. So if the eyes are there, go on. If not, stop. So let's check, check this out. I'm going to call this one uh, and see if it actually works right. So I click. Let's call this again. And oh, the eyes cannot be found. Make sure that you that you rename this. In this case, let's call this again. Left eye. Beautiful. Now we also want to have a locator that will actually be on the pupil of the eye. So roughly the same location. Again, roughly. So we can actually copy most of this. So I want to make new one here again. This is going to be the outer locator. So let's call this outer. That sounds kind of cool. And then lock I outer. Or now let's call this A. That actually makes more sense. Okay, let's also call this A. Okay, so scale, same thing, right? We just copy paste this again. Change the name of this to the aim locator. Then we want to move it, same position, but with a small offset on the z axis. Oh, copy paste this, not cut and paste. Oh, actually, we keep, keep this, we just need to move it a little bit different. There we go. So, in this case, I want to move it on the z axis, probably like plus 0.0. .0 one or something like that. Super small amount, but it should just be moving a little bit. A quick look, see if I didn't screw everything up. I did not. It's over there. It's not over there. Is it over there? I can't see. We have to aim. Well, this is, well, this is the aim. Where are you? Oh, it's over here. <laughs> oh, I probably didn't move the right object. I think I did not. There we go. One mistake. Let's try this again. Okay, let's get rid of the old locators over here. So for them, these two should be gone. And then again, let's create them. Base locators. Now we should have the ones that we need. So I'm going to grab my left aim and center is still over there. It's perfect. But your left aim should be a little bit further out. So I'm going to probably use a 0.2. 0.02. Let's do to five. Very good. Cool. So the case are there. Now we can actually use them as well to position our our uh, upper eyelids uh, curvature and our lower eyelids. So let's make a new curve. So in here I'm gonna get an upper lid, and then again I'm gonna make a base up curve. Again, nothing new. We've done this before. Like this, and then we're gonna name this. So let's give it a logical name. CV. The side. Uh, what do we call this? What do we call this? Well, what makes sense? Let's call this upper eyelid. Upper eyelid. There we go. So now again, just positions, right? This is where things get interesting. So we start at zero point zero zero. That makes sense, right? Next up, we're gonna probably move a little bit to the right. So I'm gonna do a zero point zero five. And we're going to move a little bit up on the height as well. So 0 0.02 and set 0 step. Again, we're going to move a little bit to the side as well. So again, I'm going to do this at 0 0.1, then maybe 0 0.04, probably. Yeah, that was kind of good. And again, 0. And then again, we could keep moving on the x axis. So 0 0.15. We're going to move down a little bit, and then we'll get that one, and then. 0 0.2, 0, 0. Beautiful. 
Right, let's just see if it actually works. We've got scale down first, this is going to be massive. By one, oh, zero point one and zero point one. And what do we want to scale? We want to scale the upper lid. In this case, let's have a quick look. And let's go back here. Eight, eight. We don't get any errors. Let's see, it's made, so it's right over here. Okay, that is kind of funky. <laughs> That's not my intention. But you can see there are two, right? Um, and they're both overlapping. So we need to fix somehow, make sure that this one is actually mirrored. So this one is in the opposite direction, right? So this is mirrored 180 degrees, like this. Please. So let's first see what's going on here. It's on the. Oh, it's on over here. Oops, I've got a zero. There we go. That's better. So it's on the same location, right? So how can we make sure that the right one is flipped? Well, we can do it by just using a simple multiplier in this case. So I'm gonna, in this case, I'm gonna add it here. So I'm gonna call this side multiplier. And we start it at one, right? And then we can add it here that if the loop is done, we set it to minus one. It's minus one. So it's gonna start at one, it's gonna do this function over here, and then it's gonna flip it to minus one. So that means we can actually use this to calculate or use it in to multiply the x axis with. So in this case, I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna copy paste this because I will probably make a typo. Same thing here, I'm gonna multiply this with the side multiplier. So at first it's gonna multiply by one, which means it will just go to the right, and then then we're gonna multiply with minus one, so it's gonna to go to the left in theory. A uh, quick look, zoom in on the feet, and boom, there they are. See, they're now flipped perfectly where they should be, right? So this one is now for the left eye, and this one is for the right eye. Perfect. So how do we move this? Well, I'm going to move this real fast. So now we need to move them. Um, we could just move them based on the locators that we just made. In this case, the eye central. Uh, in this case, the eye aim locator. We can use that as our reference on okay, where should we place these um, eyelids? So I just scaled them. Now I'm just going to move them again. So we're going to again do the based on move. And then we just first need to get the position right of the actual locator. So we need to again use the uh, X form. Um, I'm thinking of a logical name for the I A position. It's again based on X form. But what do we want to get the X form from? Well, in this case, I want to get it from my I A lock, and then I want to get my Q is true, T is true, W is true. So now we can use this uh, I in pos uh, zero because you kind of want to offset as well on the on that axis. Well, I'll probably just on the y axis. So plus in this case should be a little bit higher, right? So that's zero point zero one, little bit. And I in pos two. What do we want to move? We want to move the upper lid a little bit. Okay, now we don't need to do anything with this one, this should look fine. A quick look, it actually moves it. Just close this real fast, it's open. and boom. It's there, it's, it is here, it's a little bit too high, but it's here, right? Okay, so we need to offset it with, well, maybe a little bit less, and also on the Z axis as well, right? So I'm gonna grab it here, probably like 0 0.05. Plus five, let's do five. And a little bit on the ZX as well, so let's do this 0 0.0. Five here. Oh, did I just change that one wrong? 0 0.01, this is yeah, 0 0.5. This should also be 0 0.05. I don't know if this is gonna work out, but let's just find out, right? So let's close this again, make sure that we got a new and fresh of it and oh, uh, that's pretty good way too far out as you can see actually we could probably just use these locations here this should be a little bit more inside but it's fine let's actually just use location of this bad boy without offsetting on the set at all 
should be fine. Oh, I'm gonna undo my locator creation. I just check here to see if it undid it. It did. So let's just leave like that, right? And it should be fine actually. Okay, let's do it again. And again. And there you go. Yeah, that's fine. So on the X, we could use like a minus value here. So let's do that a little bit. Now, I, I don't want to focus too much on this face, right? Because every face will be different. But for like for now, for this exercise, let's do minus 0 0.01. One more test. Like it worked out. And yeah, that's, oh. yeah, we need to multiply this. So this should be minus. Should let, uh, well maybe we can do it like plus then we do the side multiplier multiply I know it should be minus minus yeah. multiplier divided by ten maybe even a hundred probably probably should be like see if this works I don't know if it's just gonna move on. And whoa, where did the other one go? Where are you? Oh yo, ooh. oops. Yeah, let's not <laughs> let's uh, let's not do that. Okay. For now let's just rest it and just move on. It's not bad, right? So okay, that's the upper eyelid, let's do the lower eyelid as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Actually I'm gonna create uh let's do it here. So lower lid again based on curve same old same old uh, is, and, then, uh -huh. and then again n is let's do cv underscore on the side lower i let's make perfect sense right okay let's input the positions well it's pretty much the same as the other one but in this case we're gonna flip the y-axis so i'm just gonna copy all of them did I come from correctly this one? In this case, I just want to change the y axis to minus. Right? Should be minus. That should be minus. Okay. Again, no errors. Then again, we're gonna. Uh, yeah. Then we're gonna scale them again. Ooh, point zero one, zero point zero one, zero point zero one. I see that I do. Should be one. Oops. Sorry. This should be the lower lid. Then again, we're gonna move it. Um, we're gonna use the I position again. So the aim, I, the aim, I aim position. Holy shit! Zero, uh, one minus zero point zero five. Oh, zero five here. And two, and in this case, the lower lid. Put it again. There you are. Beautiful. Actually, works pretty well. So what we're going to do right in the end is we're just going to grab the locators. We're going to move them to the position that we want, and then we're going to go to the vertex. And we're gonna snap them to the actual face itself, and then we're gonna hit uh, Rick, and that should create all the functions that we need. So for now, this is pretty okay. Okay. So, what else can we do now? Well, it's pretty much the same, right? So, making the curve here is exactly the same way. This one is exactly the same way. Uh, the mouth is exactly the same way. So, nothing really interesting going on here. So, I'm just gonna finish it. So, I'm gonna make all the curves here. And then next one we're gonna um, add locator for every single curve vertex and then we're gonna add the joints and then we'll, we'll see what happens then so uh, that's it for now and uh, i hope to see you again next time